things that I want to really focus on today is movement. Kids have high skill sets, but they can't move. If you can't get to the ball, you can't hit the ball. So one of the things we're going to go over today, besides the stability, uh, mobility, strength, and power, is also movement. Okay, um, and we want some some interaction. So if you have any questions about anything, feel free to raise your hand. Uh, I might need a few volunteers every now and then, so uh, I'll warm you up properly. Don't worry about it. Get your sign a waiver. Um. <laughs> You know, the kids have their expectations, you have your expectations, but at some point you have to find a middle ground. Years ago, there was this focus on, okay, you know, sit on the ground, we're going to stretch our arms. There's a lot of stretching, and, and, and I think the term becomes static right. stretching. Static stretching. And right. what, what has happened now in sports is, is the move towards dynamic stretching. Right. You want to get yourself warmed up. You've got to get the muscles warmed up. Static stretching is not going to do that. This, and sadly, what a lot of coaches and teams don't do because they run out of time, they're on the court running around and then, oh shoot, practice ends in two minutes. We don't have time for our static warm down. And so both would be great. Dynamic to start, static to finish. Absolutely. The idea of static, the, the muscles lengthening, right? So if you're going to lengthen that muscle prior to an action, that stretch reflex component cannot happen. So now you're slower in your movement patterns. So that's why we want to work on a dynamic warm up. And we'll go through a whole fast. As a matter of fact, we'll go through an entire dynamic warm up for you that you can take with you. Um, and when you're done, either a practice or a match, that's when static stretching comes in handy because now it's about recovery, right? We want to get the oxygenated blood back through that muscle fiber so now you can start recovering to get ready for your next match or next practice. Okay. There aren't that many movements on the tennis court. And if you believe it, 70% of your movement on the tennis court is lateral. Meaning that if this were my baseline, I'm going to move this way and I'm going to move that way. 70% of your movement on the tennis court. And then you add into that a couple different components. You have your diagonal movement, um, diagonal forward, diagonal back, and then you have your straightforward movements. But you don't have a whole lot of other things you're working on. It's actually very, very simple. And, um, and then the other thing with these, with these kids is we've got to teach them the correct way to exercise. All of us know, I've been a high school coach before um, as well, and we get a range, um, and I know you're going to have a very, very wide range, of kids who literally come out to play and they decide two weeks before practice starts, I think I'd like to try out for the tennis team. So you have those kids and then you'll get some kids, um, like on my daughter's team, who are you know, state ranked and, and, and regionally ranked players. And so you have this huge gamut of, of you know, huge spectrum of kids. And so what you've got to do is, is get some workouts that are going to get all those kids going. It's going to show warm up. All of these skills are going to translate into better play. And he's got a couple pieces of equipment here which are going to help you with core body strength. One of the things we talked about, and I'll go through it right now, is the typical warm-up. And, and you've seen it. I'm guilty of it. We've done it a little bit. Where you say all the kids, okay, everybody line up on the baseline. All right, first exercise we're going to do is we're going to jog up to the net, and we're going to backpedal. Next exercise, we're going to side shuffle. Oh, this is great. This is great. But what is it targeting? What is that type of a warm-up targeting? We're going to do some karaoke. We're going to hop on one foot. What body parts are we targeting here? Legs, right? Okay, the legs are a big component of a tennis player's need, right? To have strong legs, quick feet, all that. The only problem is it doesn't take into consideration that we're actually striking a ball. And this is the way we strike a ball. And then when we serve a tennis ball, we serve that way. When we volley, we step in and we have our, our motion attached to that. So all of those things have to be a part of your training. Um, I think we have about 15 exercises that we could potentially show. Some of them you know already, we're going to throw them out there as, hey, get your kids to do this. We get into our exercises is make your practices full. And what I mean by that is don't have downtime. But don't have two kids standing on the sidelines to stand in there like poking each other with a racket or, you know, looking at their cell phone. Get these kids to do things. So any of these exercises that we're going to do think outside the box and say to yourself, hey, you know, this doesn't just have to be an orchestrated workout that I do with the kids watching over them. These are some of these exercises they could be doing there while they're waiting to hit a tennis ball. Um, you know, if you were had to focus on ground strokes, you could have some kids going around the cone doing a figure eight. You could have one of the kids feeding a medicine ball to them while they're going around the figure eight, working on their hand-eye coordination. Hey, we're going to do on court one, we're going to do coach fed over here, we're going to do live ball play where two kids are hitting points and then maybe two kids are on the backcourt doing something else. Make it dynamic. You've got to think your way through this 
But like I said, when, at the end of the day, you'll have all of these exercises as tools that you can use. And it's going to make your practice a lot more exciting than, all right, guys, we're going to run through the same old fitness stuff, you know, hopping on one foot. You know, there's more to, to warm up than that. And they're partnered up. And maybe two kids are working on a medicine ball challenge. Two kids are working on our, our di um, cone drill tossing a medicine ball, two kids might be jump roping, um, two other kids might be working on the Dynamex, and two other kids might be working on bands. So you can station that, and if you have 15 minutes for your warm up, or you know, 18, go in real quick rotations, two minute rotations, and we're gone, you know, we're to the next activity. And this way, you some of these exercises that we're gonna show you, we're gonna put the pressure on you at the end of the presentation to try to put together a warm up. Let's say our focus today is on ground strokes. Pick out of those 10 exercises that we did that we might want to put in that workout for the day. We're gonna work on serves on Tuesday. What would be some of the exercises that Shannon knows that might be great to pull into that day? And some of these exercises, obviously, you're gonna to wanna to just do on a regular basis. Online, if you go to USTA, uh, I think it's under 10 and under tennis competencies, you will see the stroke dynamic um, hitting patterns and I know you know your job is not to be the coach and to teach them all their stroke patterns but if you familiarize yourself with this uh, the website is online and I'll get Alicia to put it up um, for all, all of you and send that out to you but it will also help you to look and see what does the dynamic stroke look like on the backhand side what is a forehand how is it shaped what are the leg components and that will help you tie some of these exercises in as well the good news is a lot of this ex these exercises are using your body weight, not a lot of expensive equipment. He does have a couple pieces where he says, you know what, this is worth it. If you have a booster club, it might be worth investing some money. Tennis is normally a quiet, reserved game, but what's happening is these kids, their, their attention span is like that, okay? So we got to find a way to try to make it exciting, right? So maybe raise your voice a little bit. Let's go. So it's, we have five, eight minutes of warm-up. Try to allocate five to eight minutes of warm-up. And one of those things we like to do is get them on the baseline. Get them all on the baseline. You have, what, five, 10 kids, team? Maybe 15 the most? Okay, um, get them on the baseline. Right now, just here. Um, I hit everything just like that in about, what, 45 seconds? So it does not take long, okay? Now, we're gonna face each other, right? Okay. We're gonna play chase. She has to chase me. I'll slow it down. Okay. Ready? Okay? Be able to integrate little quick units like that. Get your heart rate up. Here's the moon having fun. They don't have time to play around. They're tired. Right. Kids like to work with partners. We do it a lot with the young kids. Um, and so put them as groups. And if you want to go to different exercises, this could be a station, for example. Right. For like 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Where I follow him for, say, 20 seconds. Right. He follows me. Then we rotate to the next activity. Right. So think of it a lot as stations because it'll get the kids going. They, they act up, as you all know, when they get bored. If you hit them with any one of these 15 exercises that we have, and again, based on what you're trying to get out of the kids that day, it's going to be huge. And one of the things that Shannon did earlier with the very start, which I love, was this. What is so important about that? We do it a lot in the early development camps, teaching the kids how to run. You will be amazed at how many kids do not know how to run. And we get the kids to march. Kids can march. Get them. I guarantee every kid can march. And they will get this. And then you get them, as Shannon was doing, to try to speed it up and get their arms moving. When you have a racket, you'll see the best runners in the sport running like this, but with the racket in their hand. And so we've got to get the kids to understand that, you know, this doesn't work. You know, it's got to be, it's got to be this. 
And so you want to train the kids. You'll see who your kids are who have some coordination issues. But, but you know, just this alone, where he was marching, see where they are. Get them to march, see where they are. Some of the kids will get it instinctively because they've done other sports and they're athletic. Other just like this. Some kids will struggle horribly with this. Right. And that's a signal to you. We gotta work on this. If they can't if they can't move, they're not gonna be able to run, they're not gonna get to a ball. Right. Now how do we warm up our, our core or our shoulders? Okay. One of the things like this is just a line drill. If you notice, I'm using my toes and my hands. Okay? Then I'll come here. Once I get in the court, they'll shuffle me. And I can back up. Okay? What did I just do? I fired up my core. Okay? In that prone position. I created blood flow from my wrist, my elbow, and my shoulder. What's needed in tennis? Those three components. If any one of those three components are not working properly, where do you get? Tennis elbow. Shoulder issues. Because you're always here. So you're always in the anterior plane. So we need to work on blood flow from the wrist, the elbow, and the shoulder. So that's a great way to what we do, what we call closed kinetic chain. I'm here, and as I do this, I'm working on my core right now. I'm working on my gastroc and my calves, but I'm in the horizontal plane, right? And again, I'm up. Then we do the same thing coming back this way. Now, we're working on our vestibular system, which allows us to move effectively. Our brain's gonna send signals that we can move in different patterns. So we're not limited to just here. We can move here. We can decelerate our bodies a lot better now than we're ready for. Okay? I'm gonna put my hands right here on top of her hands here. She's gonna go thumbs up and raise her arms up. Ready? Raise up and down. Whoa, you're strong. <laughs> All right, raise up and back down. So it's a four second, it's two seconds up, and four seconds down. Two seconds up, four seconds down. And up. Now, how do you feel right now? You feel the shoulders starting to work a little oh, bit? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. And two more. And one more. Put your arms out like this for me. Okay, now, give me a nice athletic position. Now I'm gonna push against you and you have to stop. One, two, three, four, five. See, see what's happening? Six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. You have to go to the other side, right? Ready. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. What do you think just happened? What did we just work? Core, right? If you're going to do this all the time anyway, why not create anti rotation, get the smaller muscles to fire and to work? Do you see how she was like starting to tremble a little bit? Now her, her central nervous system has kicked in. She's ready to perform. How do you feel? Great. Feels great, it feels doesn't good. it? Feels good, yeah. Now that was the upper body. Well, she had a little lower body as well, but mainly it's for the core and the shoulders and upper extremities. Okay. It's not just one isolated section of your body. Right. You know, there's, there's multiple sections being pulled in, multiple muscles being pulled in. Exactly. I would say too, like I coached a boys team and they're so high energy and I can't get them to take a dynamic warm up seriously. Right. Which is like the major issue. They're like, okay, I'm gonna skip. Like yeah. they, won't, they won't do it for real. And this partner stuff I think was what yeah. really helped. Because yeah. now they can yeah. challenge each other. Yeah. Is letting them know why we're doing what yes. we're doing. Absolutely. And then I'll quiz them later. I'll say, so, so what muscles are we working now? And right. then we're like, oh, you know, the right. quadriceps. Right. So right. it's kind of fun to get them engaged yeah. in that and it understand is. Why are we lengthening the hip flexor? Because right, you're right. always in an athletic stance, exactly. which shortens, you know. Yeah. So they kind of go, oh, now I get it. Right, exactly. Yeah, and I think that's so critical because I know we were talking about this just earlier this morning that my daughter had tight hamstrings earlier. And, you know, she knows now instinctively to get her roller out. She has a roller, Shannon has one, he'll show you that in a little bit. That when she feels like they're, you know, her, she's a little bit tight, she'll get a roller out and roll out before practice or when she needs to. And it's important. You want them to be part of the training process. It's not that I'm the coach, I'm going to dictate to you. you want the kids to embrace this and this is part of their their sporting life whether they're just a tennis player or a basketball player or maybe a volleyball player in, in another season so you want them to be part of that learning it is so important, Very important. everyone seen one of these before okay a long time long time okay uh, it's generalized as a medicine ball um, but it's a dynamics ball what's great about it is 14 inches in diameter one of the things we're going to show you is how we can start developing power with the medicine ball, okay? As you know, ground strokes are important, power is important in tennis, 
but we're going to show you how to be multifaceted by using an apparatus like this. <clears throat> you can utilize this in a circuit. Um, it doesn't take a long time. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come straight up. Anybody know what some of those exercises okay. would be good for? <laughs> Lots of shoulder problems for you, sir. Yes. Anger management, too. Yeah, anger management. <laughs> right? <laughs> it works. So this is only 10 pounds. I mean, we have them as low as 4 pounds, 6 pounds, 8 pounds. You'll find them uh, in lighter weights, which is probably what you're going to want. Uh, but I wanted you to feel what 10 pounds felt like. So if you have some stronger athletes, you can actually use a heavier ball. Now, from this perspective, we can go here, jump, slam it. And every time I'm catching it, what's happening to you? I'm working on my what? Grip. And every time I grab it, I have to engage my core. core. So if you notice, everything is what? Integrated. Okay? Everything's integrated. One of the things that, that I found is the more you build athleticism, the better kids play. And the more they enjoy the game. If they can't move well, or that's maybe why not they don't they may not like the dynamic warm-up because they don't they're not moving well. Make it fun. Get them moving a little bit better. Get a little few acrobatics like this that might help them out. And one of the things we like to do with this, I can come out here. Now, what do you think I'm doing right now? Core. Core, what else? Legs. Legs, right? Cardiovascular. We have a motto, if you're not sweaty, you're not ready. Okay? If they're not sweaty, you're not ready. They're not ready to perform. The body has not, you ever hear people, oh, I gotta get warmed up, I'm not ready yet. That's a lot of what that is. They haven't taken the time to spend the time to warm up properly. Wanna try this, Kelsey? Sure. Okay. Get a load your hips for me. You're gonna hear me say load your hips a lot. Bring it here, stop it. Yep, bring it back. Good, bring it back, good, go. Now what's happening when she comes back? We have to what, decelerate, right? You have to be able to decelerate. Um, we teach kids, kids that want to learn how to jump high, we teach them how to land first, okay? Because that does what? Engages the hips to put them in a the proper position to actually jump. Same thing here, if I'm gonna accelerate, I gotta be able to decelerate. That's gonna help get some extra points, otherwise you may not be able to get. Fall to footwork, and this is gonna teach the kids that, that I'm moving this way. This is where the forehand side is driven. It's driven through the core, through the hips, through the legs. It's a kinetic chain, and that is super important. So just exercises like this are gonna translate into what you want them to do on the tennis court. So if you have kids who don't, who don't step in well and drive through the ball, this is gonna help enormously. So even if some of these kids have technical flaws in their games, God forbid, but we know it all, it all exists, these things are gonna get better performance out of the kids without, without you having to go in and re-tinker their games. So that's that's huge. Load your hips. Now, Kelsey, I want you to pull me. Pull your hands right there. Good. Pull. Good. Now, we're meeting strength with strength right now. Okay? I'm not trying to make it difficult for her or impossible for her. We're trying to work together. Okay? Matching each other's strength right now. Okay? There again, I'm feeling power come up from the ground up through my core. Okay, and that's what we need. Feel that, Kelsey? Okay, and go again. Okay, so there again, if you notice, it was a slower movement pattern. Okay, a little slower than that. So what does that tell you? We have to speed it up, slow it down. Speed it up and slow it down. You can't be one-dimensional when you're talking about preparing for performance. Okay, that's what this is, preparing for performance. So we want to enhance your performance. So you have to make sure you're in different planes. You have speed, you have slowness, you have power. Right now, we're generating power. I want the athlete to feel the power from their feet. The ground is their friend. The power starts there and then it comes from the core. Okay? So this actually teaches that because they can feel the power. So now when they have the tennis rack in their hand, the first couple of shots might be a little erratic. Right? But I would rather slow them down than have to speed them up. Okay? You can control that later. I want to teach them what power feels like and how to use the ground as their friend. Okay? So this drill here is more about power from the ground up, not just the core. All right. If you noticed, we moved our feet a little bit with this one, so it wasn't as much power as it was speed. Okay. So. Yeah. And, and the yeah. question I'm sure will be, can we use some of the bands that are out there? And we'll talk about that a little bit. 
because I mean like these balls I think what you said that they're eighty nine dollars or roughly just ten pounds is like ninety dollars so, so they're, they're not, not that very, expensive you know yeah. I, I realize a lot of you I, I know this from my own experience a lot of you have very, very tight budgets um, and things like that um, if you have any kind of access to, to booster clubs um, you know Shannon I'm sure can give you some more ideas right. on where you can get stuff inexpensively or if you can use some of the tools that are out there right. you know because you can get a lot of the stretchy bands at different places and I imagine that some of those ones with two handles you could probably make those work for a team. Uh, this band is maybe $25 this one's maybe $39 uh, they're power bands Okay, a little different than the third band. The third band is really thin, used for rehab. We use those as well, but this is more for performance. Okay, okay what am I doing? I'm opening up my thoracic spine, I'm opening up my pectoralis major minor here. What does this exercise look like? We often have the kids do, that they get so bored doing. Lunges. 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 All right, we're going to walk up to now. the net doing lunges. Right. Now I'm putting that in motion. We're putting strength in motion. So the idea behind having a certain type of movement, you want to be able to progress it and regress it along the way. See how that feels? Yep, now hold it down for me. Straight down, big jump. Right here. Okay, push up, lock out, and catch her. Excellent. Good. She looked for that full extension. Yeah. Full extension. Good. Now you feel your shoulder blades starting to come together? The idea behind that is you want to retract your shoulder blades, right? And as she comes down, retract. And come down and protract. Good. How's that feel? Feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. Just kind of opens you up a little bit. Absolutely. And it doesn't take a lot. And they're doing this, and everything's timed. Let's say you give them a minute, 45 seconds to go through each one of these segments. Now they're ready. By the time they get the rack in their hand, they're ready to go. Just in case uh, you don't have a TRX uh, rip trainer, you can still do a lot of anti rotation work. So, you want to hold that for me? So I'm here, and what she's gonna do, she's gonna try to pull me, I'm gonna stop it. And relax, now I'm gonna do the other side as well. And relax. And all I did was fire on my court. But a lot of sports like tennis and golf and very technical sports, a lot of weightlifting is not very advantageous, but you still need to be strong, but you need to put strength in motion. Okay. Um, if some of your high school kids are lifting weights, uh, make sure that they're lifting properly. And they're not doing the football workout. Okay, I, I get that a lot. Um, so make sure that if they are working out, they're not doing a football workout and doing a lot of bench pressing and things like that. It's going to tighten them up. Okay, we want to what open them up and make them strong. Okay. But if you do lift weights, make sure you spend time working on things like this as well. So you have to use an integrated approach. So maybe if they have three days to work out, maybe only one day of integrated training. It's not gonna be chest and back and bys and tries. One day you're gonna work your whole body. Okay, okay? the next day maybe all band work or uh, speed and agility training. Uh, the next day you might come back to um, more power circuits. So you have to make sure you integrate the, the entire body at once and not separate movements because that's not how you function to play tennis. You want to make sure that the brain is always sending signals throughout the body. Otherwise, you start creating compensatory movement patterns, and you overdevelop certain areas, and then you tighten up. So we have kids with a PVC pipe, over the head like this, just doing an overhead squat. Okay, so we can still do the same movement patterns without any weight or bands, so you can just use all body weight. Can you do so, that again? When he does it with his hands over his head, what is he doing? That's correct. Where is he putting his knees? A lot of times, you'll, I'll just give you a hint. A lot of times, you'll see this. You'll have the kids do lunges, and you'll see them doing this. You know, and walking down the field. You know, which Great is totally segue. wrong. And one of the things we want to talk about today is also deceleration, and that has to do with the hamstring. Okay. Okay. I want you to push against my hand. Okay. Ready? Fire. Up. Okay. And back down. Back up. All I'm doing is priming the pump right now. I'm preparing her hamstring for movement. If you notice, I'm not going all the way down because I don't want her, her patella to rotate or anything like that. I'm standing in this range here. But what's happening, I'm priming the pump for her hamstring. Okay? We've got a couple more, Kelsey. I'm going to have you stand up. Okay, now stand up for me. Okay. Now, what difference do you feel in the right and left leg? I definitely feel a big difference in my left leg. Big difference? <laughs> yeah. How long did that take? Two seconds. A few seconds. Okay? You don't have to spend a lot of time to, to get the actual output that you need to get. Hour in the gym is not necessary. You can give kids 10 minutes of dynamic warm-up. If you want, you could 
have oh, a mandatory 15-minute workout a week, and I promise you, you'll see them improve and move better on the court. So they're not leaning anymore. They can they have the ability to sit in their hips. Okay. We can just have them just go like this as fast as they can. So we're waking up that hamstring still. You may not want to trust them doing that. So have them hold onto a fence and just kind of take their heel up like this. Okay. That's a more of a regression versus what we did earlier was a little more advanced. It's a little simplified version. It's yeah. a simplified version. Low back pain, things like that that kids are getting, it, it's referred. It's not the back. <laughs> the back is overworking. The, those erectors aren't designed to do anything but to hold our posture up. They're not designed to really work. When you get home this week, try to see who can do an overhead squat. Hands are straight up, sit straight down. See who can do that. Now, we'll make the team, but when we do this, we'll just That's why I turn around. Yes. And, but the beauty is it is that they have a higher back more as opposed to doing this, which a lot of kids will do. They'll try to do their lunges with their weight over their knees, yeah, which is wrong. And you want them to, to come straight down here as straight as you can. And if they do this, so we need to make sure we keep everything out here. We can do a monster walk like this. Those are really good. These are really good. Um, For tennis players. We have some mini bands that are out there. One of my coaches didn't put them in my bag this morning, but um, they're very good to use for the younger, younger kids. Understand what it feels like to stay in your hips. They need to load their hips all the time. If they're not loading their hips, they're not ready to play. But this actually helps a lot. And then you can, there again, you can force it out, so take it out. Force it, and now that's gonna fire the glute you. so that way, now when you take it off, you're ready to go. Um, is being able to get through our hips again, okay? Now this is the question, I'm here. Now why am I going to go both sides? Yeah. Okay. Aren't you both the catches? <laughs> 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 you both the catches? Put out. Like it falls down like falling. Well there again, that's putting strength in motion. Okay? And you could use a back fence. You can use a back fence. No. Uh, this is 10 pounds, you don't want to use 10 pounds. <laughs> but you want to use a lighter ball, 2 pounds, 4 pounds, just to kind of get them used to it. Getting, loading the hips and getting out of the hips. They, they get used to that movement and then they just play more fluid. And you want to help minimize injury as well. That's a big component, is making sure we minimize the injury. And one of the things we found is that injury happens because kids don't move well. They just don't, they're, they're not strong enough, they don't move well enough, they have a high skill set, but those other components aren't addressed. Okay, you don't really move like this on the tennis court, but what is this driving at? There's a couple things this is driving at. What's one of them? Yeah. Steps, I'm on the front, the ball of my foot, I'm not, my heels are not hitting the ground. I'm changing direction as I, as, I, as I get out here, I'm coming back around. So the change of direction is really important, that push off here, as I come around here, the push off here and come back around. The other thing it's getting at is awareness. Tennis players have to be very spatially aware. When you're going back for a ball that's gone over your head, you've got to kind of know where the rest of the court is. you got to know where these cones are so you don't trip over them. You see kids hitting on these all the time, you know, lack of spatial awareness. But one of the things that can be very beneficial here is, again, we could be using a, 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 a ball. We could have Shannon work. Okay, so now I'm working on his focus while doing this. It's a little bit more complex. Okay, again, but this could be one of your stations. That could be one of your stations. You could have the Dynamix ball as one of your stations. We brought some jump ropes. We're not going to get into those, but weighted jump ropes are wonderful. So few kids jump rope. You jump rope for a couple minutes. It's exhausting. Jumping rope should be part of your dynamic workout for sure. Again, keep the kids busy. Um, a lot of these kids are not going to go home on their free time and go and, 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 and do some of these exercises. And some of them may be specific if you're the guy with the Dynamix ball. But, you know, again, the kids could get some of these things. You know, this I think I got at Marshall's. It was probably like $5.99, you know? But again, is it the best quality? No, but does it work? Yeah, it's a medicine ball, it works. He is gonna be, again, make sure, as Shannon said, you start with a lower level weight and work your way up. Our goal is, is not to kill the kids, our goal is to get the kids in shape. We don't want to injure them, we want them to become fitter. But as Shannon said, we need to know how to decelerate and then hold our balance. Totally critical here. You know, we don't want them hitting our heel as we do that. Again, this is another station. You could have somebody moving through here. You know already, and it's okay to incorporate some of the, you know, the crossover steps. Shannon had a good exercise when he started out, um, and which got the kids marching to running to side shuffling. Mix it up for the kids. There is a ton of stuff out there. The best information I've ever got anywhere was just from putting together 
ideas from other people. It's okay to buy, but you know, if you see it and you're like, wow, that's a great idea. As you're trying to pop this way, okay? You can do it as the outside load. Just try to work on that push off, okay? When, when you play tennis, you've got to be here and you've got to be able to push back. Where I have a racket in my hand and I try to touch the line, these are called service line repeaters. Keep going back and forth. You do this for 30 seconds, you're done. <laughs> the hallmark, I think, of all that we've done um, so far with Shannon is to keep this as stations, keep it quick, switch to something else. That is so much of what tennis is. You know, the average point lasts what? three to seven seconds. Then you have your 20 seconds to kind of catch your breath again before the next point and then you go again. So a lot of these stations that you can set up are gonna be just like that. Quick bursts of energy, doing one particular activity, and then going to the next.